Welcome to my thoughts on Season 1, Episode 1, Secret Invasion. This episode is called Resurrection. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. So, yeah, really loving how gritty and dark this show is. I'm hoping they keep that up for the rest of it. And I, I like the, you know, one of the first things we were told is, you know, you can't imagine you can't trust information you know which is extremely relevant you know today we really do have like depending on where you are politically you know the the sources you're likely to listen to is is you know differs a lot so yeah and i appreciate you know i think his name is prescott like he sounds like He's just really paranoid, you know, which is exact. I really appreciate the show acknowledging that right up front because that you know it's kind of it's the elephant in the room. You gotta admit this sounds ridiculously paranoid, but you know once you have that out of the way, we can get on with the the fun of it. And yeah, we learn you know the scrolls now want Earth, and. You know, sadly, a lot of real-life conflicts have been, you know, are about someone wanting, you know, some resource, including, you know, sometimes including living area, you know. And, see, yeah, so there's a fight between Prescott and the fake, um... Ross, and I appreciate that, you know, and, and Ross shoots him, and, you know, there actually is blood here. There's a lot of MCU that's too afraid of, of showing any blood, and sometimes it gets very awkward when you're, like, you know, but, but yeah, so I really appreciate that this does, and I feel like also the, I guess I can't say it either, Nick Fury says a certain word. And then Maria Hill says, you can't say that. And then he says, no, you can't say that. That's also a bit of a, you know, yeah. And let's see. So, yeah, the... I, I like the shot of, you know, fake Ross and what turns out to be Talos in disguise. You know, they're, they're running you know, up the stairs of this this building and the camera is positioned outside and gradually pans up as the light goes on on a floor and then we see them run past the window and this, yeah, that's a good... And, yeah, we, we learn, you know, the apparent Russian was Talos and that wasn't Ross, that was a scroll. I don't know if they're going to keep doing that, but the, you know, the, the episode ends with not Nick Fury, you know, scroll Nick Fury shooting Maria, which I appreciate, you know, that, that tells us it's serious, that tells us this is going to have consequences. Maria has been in the MCU since phase one, you know, she was introduced in the first Avengers, so this is a big deal. And, and usually, you know, and, and yeah. Usually Nick and Maria work together, so, you know, now he's down, you know, maybe his long, the, the person he trusted for the longest, you know, kind of thing. But yeah, so far, each time we get a dramatic reveal that someone was actually a scroll, it's not that that character was always a scroll, which is, you know, in the comic, the idea was, no, you know, for all these years, this you know, important Marvel character has secretly been a scroll, and I, I, I know some people love the idea that that I, I kind of, I would be very happy if they just stick to the, you know, yes, I get the appeal. It's, it's like very, very, like it, it redefines so many things, you know. And I did like learning the that, um, you know, in in. Far From Home. In Far From Home, we learn that at least some of Nick Fury on Earth has actually been Talos, you know, so that's a great... Hey, actually, yeah, I guess we learn that Soren, I think, was the... the Talos' wife died 
maybe that was like foreshadowing because she posed as Maria Hill. She died and then Maria Hill dies here. Uh, yeah, anyway, the the um, yeah, I I appreciate that the the you know, I I did think that was a really cool reveal that that Nick Fury was uh, you know, yeah. On Earth, the the Nick Fury we knew on Earth for some time at least was actually Talos. We still don't know how long. I wonder. May, maybe we'll get a clear answer in the the next the the what's it called the Marvels. You know, I I could see how that could anyway. I get the appeal. I think that it would take away from a lot of of canon. So I, I hope that they don't reveal that someone has, or at the very least, you know, the, the, yeah, part of the thing uh, that I like about the Talos Fury reveal is that this is actually the, the uh, what's the word? Um, we Yeah, it's clear that Nick Fury was part of that decision, you know, when, when Talos contacts him, you know, you can tell they they agreed that this thing was going to happen. You know, the the it wasn't you know because the way Talos is talking to Nick, it it doesn't sound like he's saying, "Okay, I'm sorry. I know you weren't wild about me taking your identity." No, he he says, "I gave the kid the glasses. Something went you know. You better come down. You know." the the intro is is oh, right and I really like that you know um, uh, yeah right right before the intro plays here we get you know Maria says oh it's one of yours one of you guys and he says no it's one of graphics you know immediately making clear you know that it's not that now all scrolls are evil it's that there's Talos, the, the, yeah, there's the people who work with Talos, and there's the people who work with Gravik. And, yeah, absolutely love the, the intro sequence. Very classic sci-fi with the, the, the kind of toxic green kind of just really... Yes, I realize it's very similar to the Skrull skin color, at least in the comics, not as much in the MCU. But it just feels exactly right because this really is a classic sci-fi. You know, this like if you showed me that intro out of context, I might think, oh, so it's like a '60s sci-fi schlock thing. You know, see, I, I definitely did get a, a very classic invasion of the body snatchers vibe. So yeah, let's. See. And the uh, yeah, I, li I love the faces shifting in the intro also, and yeah, Fury returns to Earth, and you know Maria says you know welcome back to Earth. It's good that he's back because if you say welcome to Earth, you are legally obligated to smack the person in the head. And I like the thing about, you know, Talos, you know, yeah, Talos and, and Fury briefly talk about, you know, oh, yeah, it's like adapting to your new, to, you know, the, the plant is adapting to Earth. And they talk about, you know, we always thought that was a possibility, you know, so, so basically using the, the metaphor, you know, Talos has been on Earth for some time now, and He's adapted, you know, he's, which I, w I will, I do hope that this doesn't become like, oh, well, he's one of the good ones, he's the model minority, it's just those other refugees, because, like, in, in Captain Marvel, the solo movie, they were very much coded as refugees, and I thought that movie did a really good job, like, the, the, most of the difficult, yeah, uh, most of the, most of the conflict over the course of the movie, between Skrulls and and uh, Carol Danvers, is because Carol has been lied to. She's been told these are really violent and they're like spreading all over the place. And these are things that are said about refugees in real life. And 
I really hope that this doesn't backtrack and say, oh, you know, yeah, for sure, some refugees are super violent. You know, in, in this way, like, Gravik and his people are terrorists. So, yeah, I, I do hope... Let's see, you know, I, I prefer when when recent stories point out that if you're in America, a lot of terrorists are actually uh, white supremacists. Not, you know... Not non-whites, and let's see. Yeah, we learn that you know they're hiding in Russia because they aren't harmed by the nuclear radiation, and yeah, that that is a, a good detail. And it is also like nobody's gonna walk up to to you know a facility that's got two two Russian you know military people with like Kalashnikovs outside. And be like, can I come in? You know, the only people who are going to do that are people who are scrolls and are aware this is this is new scrollless. Which I do also think, you know, kind of makes it sound like New York, which is famously a hub for refugees. You know, uh, not only refugees but immigrants. And yeah, we see that you know misdirected rage leads to to violence. You know the the reason that the um uh, what's it called the reason that Gravik is you know getting people to to blow stuff up is because of this misdirected rage uh, you know they feel and that is something I I do appreciate you know that oh they feel like they've been abandoned by Fury and Captain Marvel the the you know, the people who said that they would help them. That does sound like, that sounds a lot like the the kind of, um, that's a, that's a white conservative terrorist right there, feeling abandoned by the leaders who said, who were supposed to help them kind of thing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a mixed. Did I say yet? Yeah, I absolutely love this episode. Overall, I absolutely loved it. I... I appreciate that they did manage to slip in some MCU jokes, you know, not to the point, it's not like distracting or something, but, you know, the, the president is told Nick Fury has left Saber and asks, what do you mean? And Rhodey's like, I mean, I've, okay, I've got some synonyms, if they, you know, because it's such a, yeah, I, I approve of that joke because I've, I, every single time someone is like, what do you mean? Or something in, in a, it's like, I mean, you know what he means, you know, why, why are you, why are you wasting, you know, like, just, just move on in the conversation. Don't say what does, what do you mean, because clearly you understood the words. Now, yeah, and, you know, Fury is caught, but it's by Sonya, and, you know, it was... That was the idea, you know, he wanted to get in contact with her, and that is, you know, that's a, a bit of a spy trope that, you know, in order f to get into contact with someone that you don't, you know, because, like, the the ways he had of contacting Sonya are hugely outdated. He hasn't, you know, yeah, hasn't been in contact with her for, for many, many years, and anything that he might try is going to read like an enemy discovered their, you know, found some outdated information and decided to try it. So no, instead, he just acts like, this, you know, and, and the, the thing with, you know, you're going to take a walk in Russia, you're going to stand out. And it, what did he say? That's the idea or something like that. Now. And he just puts on a right, you know, oh, please, make yourself at home. And yeah. You know, she says she will not work with Fury. And you, I mean, you can understand where she's coming from. This idea, you know, like, if he, if she considers, she considers him a liability, straight up. She says that. And that's not, you cannot work with someone that, you know, it's, it's too important kind of thing. And, yeah, Fury placed this, this little spy camera thing on one of the clocks, which is, you know, I, I do appreciate that, because otherwise the scene would almost be pointless, you know, like, okay, 
he's not going to work with Sonya, but he went to talk to Sonya, but no, he gets information, like, from that later on. So that's, yeah, and the, the, um, uh, yeah, we meet Gaia. Glad to see, I, I'm blanking on her name, but I'll have it momentarily. Um, Emilia Clark, you know, I, I, I thought she was fine in, in Solo and in Terminator Genesis, but I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be the, this kind of thing of, you know, yeah, it seems like she's going to be more interesting here, and, you know, people keep telling me she's amazing, on Game of Thrones, but that one has an ending that a lot of people didn't like, so I'm not currently planning on watching that one. So, so yeah, glad to see her in something where she's good. And, you know, I appreciate the this thing of, you know, she says, we only grow scroll stuff in New Skrullis, which is, of course, also this thing of, you know, so they're not assimilating, they're not, you know, it's, I think, is that what's called nat nativism? I Let's see. Um, oh, actually, never mind. That's almost the opposite. Yeah, whoops. Anyway, um, the, the, you know, basically, yeah, they're, they're rejecting the other. And, you know, like, you'll sometimes hear that the ideal kind of, um, immigration kind of thing is if you can, you know, if, if you can, if you can work within the, the kind of, um, what's it called? You know, for, for example, food. If you can make some, if, if you can combine some of the food from your own country and, and culture with that of the, the country and culture that you moved into, you know, that's kind of like, yeah, you know, everybody wins like that. You know, it, it makes it impossible for the, the anti-immigration people to, to claim, oh, you know, they bring nothing good, you know. And the, the yeah, you know, it's, it's obviously it's not good for them to lose their original culture. But, a, you know, a good balance, basically. So, you know, we're seeing that New Scrollers does not, you know, they, they continue to hold on and Talos has, uh, you know, adapted. And, yeah, we, we learned that, you know, Gravik basically helps every scroll that he can in order, in, in part, in order to, to get some of them to help fight. And this is, of course, an age-old, you know, way of, of getting support for your cause. I do hope that they, that over the course of this show, they acknowledge, because, you know, that's, that's bad, but... I have to wonder how many of these regular scrolls know what Gravig is doing, and if some of them maybe, you know, without Gravig would not be getting, you know, maybe Talos can take that over at the end of the show, can make sure that scrolls are are living much better lives, and I I really like we see, you know, how one of the one of the scrolls becomes, you know, one of the, yeah, I guess, yeah, a warrior scroll getting the identity. You know, he takes the face and the mind, and then he can pass. You know, so that's, yeah, very, very nicely done. And I mean, the the exact thing of taking his mind. I don't know if they could do that in the movie. It's been a while since I watched Captain Marvel. I will rewatch it before the Marvels. But but I don't I'm not sure they could just take it just like that. But 
it's fine, and certainly they could read memories, you know, in the Captain Marvel movie. Now, but, but yeah, you know, that is a very clever way of, because that's the first thing that, like, if you, if you have, you know, if you have someone that's posing as someone else, you know, how are they convincing, you know, can they, do they, do they have the knowledge to, to make it seem like they are the original people, person? <sighs> do not love when Fury tells Talos, Gravik knows mercy is your weakness, and that, you know, they have to be brutal toward, you know, maybe it's just set up, maybe later on Fury will be proven wrong, but, you know, yeah, I'm hoping for that. So I'm, I'm holding off final judgment on it. But yeah, you know, this idea of the, the people we're fighting are doing bad, so we also have to do bad in order to, to match. I, I'm not saying it's never the case in real life, but it is... This is a piece of fiction, you know. They can write it any way that they want, basically. Uh, you know, I mean, there's copyright limitations and and I guess budgets you know ultimately but by and large they can write pretty much anything they want and to write something so like pro harsh you know methods yeah <laughs> I like the thing with you know they're talking about like age and uh, you know I'm not even 40 in you know what in in what do you say in human years or by human, which is interesting because the actor is 54, but okay. Um, the, the, 54, he looks great, man. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, yes. You know, he's, he says, you know, I haven't even gone through my midlife crisis, um, shopping spree. What was yours? And he says, and Fury says, the Avengers. That's that's very funny. Let's see, I I like how Fury makes it clear that this guy is not allowed to to lie. You know this thing of that. So that was a lie. You you know everybody gets one, nobody gets two. You know kind of thing. And and I. <laughs> It must have been very difficult for them to resist the urge to very explicitly reference because it's right there. You know, he ke the, the dude keeps pretending he doesn't know what he's talking about. And at no point does Fury say, what ain't no country I ever heard of? Do they speak what in scroll, you know, scroll world or something? You know, but yeah, it would have probably been distracting, but yeah. Um... And I like the thing, you know, are you going to shoot me? Probably. But not right now. <laughs> and, yeah, so the there's a fight between Talos and the Skrull, and we see that Talos was not quite up to taking out the Skrull. And, yeah, Maria fights... Gaia, and then Talos confronts Gaia, and I really do appreciate that, you know, they, there's, there's so many versions of this scene, like in older fiction, where someone is talking to someone, you know, and they just don't get to say anything of use, but here, you know, he, he tells her that her mother is dead, and, you know, ask the people you work for about that, you know, kind of, so, so that, you know, we, we, you know, you have to wonder if she is going to, you know, I mean, yeah, she does start to, start to turn against them in, in this, if she's going to, like, fully go, you know, because at the end of the day, did she know that those were decoys or not? A anyway, moving on the... Let's see. Yeah, I like the, the conversation between Maria and Fury and the, you know... You know, 
It used to be that when we play chess, you tell the truth, or we tell the truth, something like that, you know. And it comes up again, you know, people who know Fury think that he is not the same after the blip. And, you know, that is uh, um, the kind of thing that, yeah, you know, he lost control. He, he completely lost control. Like, you know, he, before that, he already lost S.H.I.E.L.D., but he still had some, you know, he still managed to unmothball of a, a, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. carrier. So, is you know, yeah, there, there is actually, you know, this, that was the most disempowered he'd ever been, and that can really change someone, especially someone who's used to being in control. So... Uh, yeah, and uh, and it is also you know it's this thing of everyone around them is potentially a scroll is is potentially not who they appear to be, they're they're different somehow. So it works well to to use that you know to have a metaphor here about the the you know having changed even though he like he physically looks the same kind of thing and. Yeah, so, you know, Gaia comes back and she says, you know, she, the, there were some people there, but she claims she can't identify them. Yeah, that might actually have been when the decision to, to do decoys was, was made. And... Let's see... Um... I'm not entirely sure what note. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on. Um, let's see. Yeah, so so Gaia talks to Talos and gives them some gives information, and you know the the bags are sprayed. You know, there's infrared spray on them, so the glasses can pick that up, which is a great idea. I appreciate how many crowds. Like, even just in this episode, you know, there's the start with Skrull, Ross, and, you know, Talos. They, they run through at least one crowd in the chase. There's a crowd here at the very end with the, with the bags and such. And I feel like, huh, were those really the only two... Uh, huh, okay, anyway, you know, because it is this thing of, like, anyone in the crowd could be a scroll, and at the very end, you know, Fury spots someone, and the way that this, you know, child is, is looking at Fury, it's like, okay, there's no way that that's, that's definitely a scroll, you know, the, the, and I appreciate, you know, I wasn't entirely sure before, but yeah, evidently they can, you know, and someone the size of an adult scroll can change to look like a child. Is it because he has the big balloon? Is that necessary? Like, they have to be carrying something that makes up the rest of the body? Maybe, but but yeah. And I, I do appreciate, you know, like... The scroll no, it, it, yeah, it does turn out to be graphic, doesn't it? You know, knows he's not gonna shoot. He can't risk it, so he can just maintain eye contact and switch. You know, like it's it's like if this was a musical and that was like graphic big musical number, the refrain would be, "I'm in control here." You know, I can I can look right at you. You're not gonna shoot me. I can change my appearance several times, just to screw with you, because he's still, like, clearly, no, that's, that's, that's the scroll right there, you know, he's even, like, still looking at, he'll, he'll turn and look back at Fury kind of thing, so, you know, he's just, it's just a power move, and those are always great for your villains to have. And, yeah, we learn that they are decoys, and that's also, that's part of it. You know, okay, if this is a scroll that's, you know, spotted Fury, why isn't he panicking? Why isn't he like, 
I can't believe you found us. He's just looking right at him like, yeah, I'm okay with you being, honestly, take a seat, stay right here. You are in no way interfering with my plan. And yeah, we have the several explosions and the, yeah, scroll fury, yeah, Gravic, yeah, looks like, yeah, morphs into looking like Fury and shoots Maria Hill, and yeah, very, very impactful ending. You know, it really did look like they would be able to stop this terrorist attack, but they actually did, you know, the, the attack was carried out, and I also appreciate, like, for some of the explosions, at least, you do see, like, people there. That's another thing, but, like, in in the MCU, you know, this PG-13 kind of thing, you know, if you're going to show an explosion, maybe don't also show people, or maybe, like, they're just enveloped by the explosion kind of thing, because an explosion and people right there kind of tells your brain, okay, those people, if they survived at all, they definitely got badly hurt, you know, kind of thing, so... Yeah, if you know, if you go back and and look at like there's a lot of MCU explosions where you don't actually see like the the person, you know, you yeah, a person or more, one or more people in the the yeah. Yeah, I uh, absolutely loved it. Um really looking forward to the the rest of this and yeah, um you know, this was what I hoped it would be. It's, you know, gritty return to this sort of, you know, it feels like a sequel to the the Captain America films, uh, you know. So, you know, after we've had several MCU, uh, you know, the last couple have been somewhat... <sighs> well, yeah, let's, let's just briefly go over. So, the, yeah, the very last one was She-Hulk Attorney at Law, which I do maintain I really, really like a lot and love some parts of, and it definitely isn't made worse by its criticism of misogyny. Before that, we had Miss Marvel, which I absolutely loved, and that's, you know, very much a teen-oriented show, you know, absolutely loved it. There was some serious stuff to Moon Knight, to, to be fair, but that one did also have, you know, it's like, we're globetrotting, and this, you know, yeah. And and certainly the the god stuff felt less like grounded, which you know it's, it feels silly to say, but for an episode about like humanoid shapeshifters, it was very grounded. You know, it's it feels kind of ridiculous to say. There was definitely some some light stuff in Hawkeye. What if had some really broad comedy? Um, was Loki maybe the last time? Loki and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier were serious, you know, so it is, uh, yeah, that that is the the thing that they're they're doing here. Now that that is everything I had to say about this episode. So yeah, um, absolutely loved it. There will be a couple more videos this week. Hope to catch you in one of them. Make mine marvel.